of reasons. It is after lunch, it is after quite a few technical presentations. Everybody feels a little bit sleepy. And I've got this quite gifted quality. When I speak, people feel very sleepy. <laughs> so if you're not sleepy already, get ready for the ride of your life. <laughs> My name is Kamran Nakwi. I'm Chief Network Architect for Broadcom's Core Switching Group based in the UK. And for those of you who do not know, Broadcom is a major manufacturer of networking solutions, specifically semiconductors and infrastructure software. We at Broadcom, our mission is to democratize networking for everyone. And we believe that network disaggregation, this idea of decoupling hardware from software, it is a key enabler for this task. I'm sure all of you know that if you go 15, 16 years back, the whole networking industry was dominated by vertically integrated solution. And it was the mega scalers like Google, Meta, uh, Amazon, working closely with Broadcom, who pioneered this idea of network disaggregation. And now, if you say, see, over the last 10 years, there's an increasing number of enterprises and telcos who have adopted the idea of network disaggregation. Similarly, when this AI boom started, there was a notion that maybe for this GPU to GPU communication, a vertically integrated technology like InfiniBand will be a dominant player. Once again, Megascalers showed us that the right way of building AI networking is not to use a, any vertically integrated technology, but the right way, right network technology for AI is definitely Ethernet. And that is how seven out of eight data scalers today use Ethernet-based disaggregated networks for their AI infrastructure. And we see the trend is trickling down. We see that many of these uh, GPU as a service provider companies like O42, Nscale, and so on, they use Ethernet-based disaggregated solution for their AI networking. Now, what do we at Broadcom offer for AI networking? Uh, you can see on the right hand side, this is called Switch Scheduled Fabric. This is a solution for AI networking which is based on Broadcom's Jericho 3 Nano family. We also have something called Endpoint Scheduled Fabric, which is a solution based on Broadcom's Tomahawk line of family. And we also have industry leading products for PCI switching, for optical networking, for Ethernet NIC. But I want to spend these last couple of minutes to talk about the product I am very passionate about. So just last week, Broadcom announced that we are shipping Tomahawk 6, which is the world's first 102.4 terabit per second silicon. This is twice the bandwidth of any other Ethernet chip available on the market. And with Tomahawk 6, we are continuing our tradition of being the first to market and being a generation ahead of our competition. Tomahawk 6 is not just an upgrade, it's a breakthrough. Why? Because it, in one platform, we combine the highest bandwidth, the highest power efficiency, and the most comprehensive set of adaptive routing features for AI scale up and scale out technologies. With Tomahawk 6, we enable an unprecedented level of scale. Let me give you an example. Think about scale up network. With Tomahawk 6, you can build a 512 XPU scale up domain. It is seven times the scale of any other technology. Think about scale up network. You can build a 100,000 GPU cluster using Tomahawk 6 with just two tier networking. With any other chip in the market, you will at least need three-tier network to support a 100,000 GPU cluster. Which means if you're using a competing product, you will be doing a, you will be spending a lot more cost, there will be a lot more power, and there will be a lot more latency because of the three tiers. Tomahawk 6 is not just an upgrade, it's a breakthrough. And you can count on Broadcom to continue this space of innovation to continue to democratize networking one chip at a time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Andrew. So let me jump to the questions here. So this is your question number one.
we've already seen this ahead of time. So you talk about AI networking. Is it also for HPC? Uh, yes and no. So yes, for most of the HPC application, this network will work very well. Tomahawk Life of Silica that I was showing you, it has a 600 nanosecond of fall-through latency, which works very well for most of the HPC applications. But if you have an HPC application out there which requires maybe a 2 microsecond latency, then there are other solutions which are better than that. But having said that, how many of you are aware of Ultra Ethernet Consortium? A lot of you, I think, right? So UEC 1.0 specification are coming out tomorrow. I will be talking about UEC in my presentation tomorrow at HPC Solutions Forum at 3 p.m. Let me advertise that. So if you want to know more about it, come. Uh, and I also know that there are some products based on UEC which are coming out later this year, which will, which, Ethernet based products, which will solve all the HPC problems as well. Okay. I'm right. glad you brought up UBC. I mean, the tracking that is one of the big stories coming out of the, the uh, show this week. Okay, first of your secret questions. You said lowest power consumption on your slide. Lowest power consumption compared to what and measured how? At every level, right? So, when I say lowest power consumption. Specifically, though. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Competition. So, compared to any of the other available chips of this size, I mean, we do not normally have 102.4 terabit, uh, but, but at every generation, 51 terabit, 24.6 terabit, Broadcom power efficiency has been the lowest, has been the best compared to competition. Okay. Anyway, it, was, it, has, it has been tested at every level, low level, 50% low. Is across the board, you're saying? Yeah, okay. Rupak knows that I love going after those comparisons. Okay, <laughs> yes. So this is your, you've seen this ahead of time. So what optical networking products do you offer and where do they get deployed? Because you have this little image over there about optical. Thank you for sharing this question in advance because I didn't know the answer. So I went back and asked my colleagues. Uh, we offer a number of optical uh, products. So we produce optical file, which are used in V timers, in DSPs, in gearbox. We make optical power lasers, laser guns. We also make co-packaged optics, CPO. How many of you have seen CPO, co-packaged optics? If you have not, I would say this is a state of the art technology which you will see in almost all high bandwidth switches going forward. At our booth D19, we have a switch with CPO uh, built in. It's a glass roof, so you can see the CPO technology. It is very, very good technology because it gives you a lot of efficiency and a lot of power saving. You have all your optical capability built onto the silicon, which means you do not need any pluggable optics. It saves you tons of money. And then LPU as well, linear pluggable optics. These are the optics which do not have a DSP in them. They do not have a retimer in them, which means that these optics run at a lower power they run at a lower temperature and they are a lot more reliable with compared to the pluggable optics. Okay, so let's get to this last question. This is something we have never done before. We're having a vendor showdown history right so, now. Yeah, so this is a secret question and we couldn't even decide what secret question to ask. So we made it up right now. Why are we giving the brother? We, we had to watch your presentation and know what we wanted to ask, but we came up with it. I'm glad we did. You showed your roadmap slide and you have your Tomahawk 6, which is hitting 102.4 tera per second, you said, and you said it's not just an upgrade, it's a breakthrough. Those are your exact words. But I looked at your roadmap chart, you have doubling of speeds on the regular every two years. What makes this one a breakthrough and not an upgrade when you've been doubling all along? And other than, okay, it's faster, I get it. They've all been twice as fast as the previous one. Why is this one now a breakthrough? We're making a lot of money because of it. <laughs> As I mentioned, I, I think I didn't clarify it very well. Traditionally, customers have been using different technologies for scale up and scale up technology. Scale up is when you are connecting your XPUs within a chassis or within a rack. Scale out is when you are connecting your GPUs across the rack. Tomahawk 6 is coming with features, and that's what I was trying to say. It's coming with features where in one platform, 
we are combining features which are good for not only scale out networking but also for scale up networking. Things like link level retry, things like trimming, things like optimized headers. I will explain some of these things in more detail in my session tomorrow. But Tomopsis is a, a breakthrough because it solves your problems not just for your scale out networks but also for your scale up networks. Very good. Can we have a good presentation? Here's, here's the QR code for voting on Kamran's answers to our questions. And we'll keep it up there for a minute or so while we get ready for the next speaker. Our next speaker is from Fast Data. We have Jan Heikler. Please come on up, take the stage.